Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 26. We are on day 16. Three shows left, 17, 18, and 19, and that's this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And man, this is shaping up to be a really interesting block because we are on day 16, which means this is an even day, which means this is a B block day. Really does feel like it could be anyone's game, and, and really the A block after Monday also does, but B block is shaping up really, really well. But before we get to the B block matches, as usual, we normally start with nothing but tag team matches. Today, we actually start things off with a singles match. We've got Ryosuke Taguchi taking on Young Lion David Finlay. And John, are you excited for this match? I mean, I think it's always an opportunity for a young lion like David Finley to step up, get in the game. And, you know, I mean, Taguchi is a former IWGP junior heavyweight champion. He's no slouch. We'll see if David Finley can get the job done. Absolutely. So let's get things started. We have our New Japan World player set to 14 minutes and 10 seconds. If you don't have New Japan World, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. It's just over eight U.S. dollars for a month, and you'll be charged, I believe, on the first of each month, regardless of when you buy it. So if you buy it now, you get it for the rest of August. You get the opportunity to check out this entire G1 Climax. You can go back into the archive, into the previous videos if you want, and check out even July episodes of G1 Climax, or you can even go back to 2015 G1 Climax shows. I actually went back, um, not last night, but the night before, and checked out MLL excursion that led to him joining Los Ingobernables in the first place, and that was really interesting to watch. But you can actually do any of that kind of stuff on New Japan World. So that being said, we are at 14.10. We are going to be hitting the play button on go. Three, two, one, go. And here we've got Taguchi and David Finley. They shake hands there just to get things started, and there's the bell. I mean, these two men have tagged together quite a few times. I mean, there's definitely mutual respect between these two, but that all goes out the window when the bell rings, and Taguchi prepping that rear there. You can expect a lot of hip attacks in this match, people. Oh, absolutely. That's what Taguchi does. That's his thing. And now I like David Finley there. You know, had Taguchi scouted with that kick. Tries to initiate a Greco-Roman knuckle lock. Taguchi opts for the waist lock takeover, and David Finley with the switch. And Taguchi back to it. And now we're back at neutral here. So we're starting with a feeling out process, more or less, here, partner. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you've got to do that. I think these guys have had a, a couple singles matches already in this tournament, haven't they, though? Or at least I one. No, it was the one. Yes. Now Still, that, that one match was pretty solid. Taguchi in these singles matches seems to take himself just a little bit more seriously. Maybe not quite as many hip attacks. Maybe traditional wrestling holds and that's always nice to see you know absolutely and you see david finley there starting in a little groove himself with that drop kick and i was gonna oh, mock um, taguchi there with a hip attack of his own david finley using hip attacks on taguchi is going to inspire taguchi to fire back with hip attacks of his own which of but i guess david finley feels cocky right now he's feeling pretty happy about himself Certainly, and there's the first actual hip attack from Taguchi in the match. Just rocked David Finley there. That was right in the face. And again by Taguchi, and now, like I said, folks, you're really going to see that rear come into play. That was the third straight hip attack, and now Snapmare takeover. Another hip attack. Man, David Finley's head, he may not even know where he is. Hooks the leg here, and David Finley kicks out. I'll tell you, David Finley, the son of Fit Finley. Fit Finley always known to... You know, kind of look down at his opponents, be very aggressive. I think David Finley trying to channel that here, but to no avail, as now Taguchi's working that rear chin lock. Now he's got the arms outstretched here, just pulling him back while he's driving that knee into the small of the back, and this has got to be excruciating for David Finley. Absolutely. David Finley, you know, he's a tough guy, but this is painful for anyone. Could you just think about this, people? A knee, which is, I mean, it's sharp, and especially Taguchi is a relatively fit guy, his, he doesn't have any real fat on top of his knee. He's got, I think it looks like he's got a knee pad on, so that might not help. But back while cranking your arms and back and, and putting that kind of, kind of torque on your shoulders, it's painful. 
Absolutely. And oh, and now there's the another that, running though. hip attack. He likes to do this with two people, but I guess he can do it with one just as well. Yeah, Dan Finley really getting the brunt of it. And, I mean, all jokes aside, I mean, we can laugh and giggle always using his rear. I mean, when you're coming at somebody with that kind of force straight to their head, that's got to really throw off your equilibrium. Nice jumping back elbow there by David Finley to try and get back in this here. And now both of these men on opposite corners here. And now David Finley going to try and charge. Is going to be another back elbow? No, it's not going to be anything because Taguchi gets the boot up. It looks and to now me like he's double... going for an uppercut, not so much a back elbow, but Taguchi got his feet up, so we're never going to know. <laughs> exactly. It's a moot point regardless. David Finley reversing the Irish whip. Taguchi, oh, he got caught there into a kind of atomic oh, drop. That inver yeah, that inverted atomic drop, Finley. Oh, and look, look at this. This is different. What is Finley doing? And an uppercut there. He's attacking, well, he's attacking Taguchi's funky weapon. And you know something? I don't blame him. And, yeah, he did back elbow, back elbow, and then that time it was an uppercut. Now David Finley perched on the top rope, spinning uppercut there from the top rope, goes into the cover, two, and Taguchi kicks out. He stays in it again. I do think this would be a big win for David Finley. brother. Absolutely. And, partner, like I said at the start, I do think this would be a huge win for David Finley because, I mean, Taguchi is a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, so that could really put David Finley on the map. Oh, That's nice. Oh, here's the small package, though. Two. Oh, David Finley kicks out. That was close. Oh, but now look at this. The roll up. Finley kicks out of that as well. Taguchi. Oh, but now look at this. David Finley with the backslide. One, two, and Taguchi gets out of that. Man. Pin attempt exchange. Kind of disappointed. Another one of them got the three count, though. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, David Finley's really learned from his interactions with Jushin Thunder Liger, that's for sure, as he nails a few uppercuts there off the ropes, but there's another hip attack by Taguchi. And now getting, channeling his inner Nakamura. I think that was a shining wizard there. Two. It was a shining wizard with his ass. Yeah. David Finley kicking out. I actually did jump ass first at David Finley's face with that. It just looked kind of like a shining wizard because of the angle he did it. Are we going to get a tiger suplex from Zaguchi? That a was tiger? a chicken wing oh. face buster. And that Crazy. gets it done. And wow, that's it. Taguchi, very nice finishing move there. Face buster, into kind of a you know the the chicken wing into the almost a wheel wheelbarrow face buster, but yeah, that was great. Exactly, and it does enough damage to put David Finley away. Competitive match up here, and it's funny that for how often Taguchi used his rear in this match, it was his more technical side of that chicken wing face buster that does the damage here. Yeah, Taguchi. We unfortunately we didn't watch. Uh, the best of Super Juniors this year. We've got to maybe go back and watch maybe like two or three shows out of that eventually. But Taguchi, from what I've heard, actually showed his more technical side and didn't use the hip attacks at all during best of Super Juniors earlier this year. And I'll tell you, when Taguchi gets serious, you know, it's not like he's going to put the uh, the rear in the corner. Nobody puts the rear in the corner if you're Taguchi. But I'll tell you, when he gets serious, when he really turns it on, he is one fierce junior heavyweight, and David Finley learned that firsthand. Exactly. Now Taguchi, going to watch the back, showing respect to the New Japan fans here. And I'll tell you what. That's the cool to see, though. It's cool to see that he actually does have base and some fan support out there and that it's not, you know, Scrooges like us who aren't a big fan of the hip attack-based offense. Exactly. Look, everybody's a fan of somebody, and these people are a fan of Taguchi, and more power to him, and Taguchi reciprocates that affection right back as he picks up a win here to start G1 Climax 26 Day 16. So, partner, what tag team match do we have upcoming here? Uh, we've got a six-man tag coming up here. We've got Kojima, Nakanishi, and Juice Robinson taking on three representatives of the Bullet Club, Tamatonga and Yujiro Takahashi. I'd have to think the Bullet Club are going to be one hell of an arduous mountain to climb. What do you think, partner? Oh, absolutely. The Bullet Club have pretty good synergy. Yujiro Takahashi has been on a major role. So has Satoshi Kojima. But the difference is Nakanishi and Juice Robinson are both guys that really haven't been in G1 Nakanishi has been, but it's not been for a while. Juice Robinson's never been in a G1. 
And then G1 requires a certain level of athlete that both of those guys haven't had to do. Lately. So, you know, I, I think that the, the Bullet Club is definitely the favorite here. I would have to agree with you. And I think Kojima, I, I think his head will be in this match. I'm not trying to say that, but I think at the same time, he's also looking ahead because he will be getting an ROH World Championship match against Jay Lethal. You know Jay Lethal is watching this match right now. Uh, one of the best. And that's, in the in, that's in, I believe, four days, John. That's on Sunday. This coming Sunday is when that happens. And as we get nearer and nearer to the championship match, I mean, Kojima's just got to be thinking, man, I have the opportunity with my Koji Lariat in hand to beat Jay Lethal, who, let's be honest about Jay Lethal, he's on the top of his game right now. He's been so dominant as ROH world champion. But Kojima's got to be saying to himself, I can knock him off his perch, and I can become ROH world champion. That's a huge deal. And, you know, Kojima, while I do think he will be in this match, you know, he'll have his head in it, he's got to be thinking about that prospect as we get so close to that title match. Also, not allow ourselves to forget that Jay Lethal is a member of Los Ingobernables de Japón. That's right. You know, when you first made that revelation to me in conversation, I was quite surprised. But at the end of the day, I guess it makes all the sense in the world. I mean, who wouldn't want Truth Martini in their ranks? And again, Jay Lethal's been on top of his game. So Yeah, Jay, Jay and Truth Martini are actually both L.I.J. And... I think that's going to be sort of a big potential aid to Jay Lethal in retaining his ROH world title when he does defend it against Kojima because Ada, Evil, and or Bushi are going to show up to help a fellow member. Right. It's going to base exclusively on the fact that he's kind of the leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón, but... Those other guys, I mean, Naito could even send them out to help. Naito could even send them out to help Jay. Literally no effort whatsoever. He probably had it coming. Man, not once, but twice with that kill switch. He's actually the only young lion in this tour, in this, in New Japan that has gotten a winning pinfall at least once in this tournament. Right. And David, I'll tell you, Juice Finley Robinson. Has, um... And actually, I think, now that I think about it, David Finley and Juice Robinson are the only young Lions that we've seen so far, aren't they? Yeah, I believe you are right about that. And they even had a singles match against each other a while back. And Juice Robinson actually came out on the winning end. So I would say Juice Robinson is the superior young boy with the spots he's been getting and the victories he's been able to rack up here and there. I mean, he's not on any kind of a hot streak or anything. But he's done some notable things in this tournament. So, Juice Robinson getting patted down there. And I'll tell you, Nakanishi, he might be able to negate Bad Luck Folly, but Bad Luck Folly has been on some kind of roll partner. I still can't believe he beat Kazuchika Okada. And now Bad Luck Folly has got to be thinking, well, hey, when can I cash in my IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship shot? That's a now, great question, we, and I think we're going to end up being sometime this fall. Uh, I'm guessing it'll be maybe October, November, but you never know. That could he could get it instantly. He could, you know, G1 comes to an end, and by the end of August, even he could get a shot. Well, I'll tell you, if for him to get his shot, Okada would have to beat Tanahashi. Correct? Isn't that how you figured it out? I. I believe so, yes. Right. So, you know, Okada's got to get back to his winning ways, you know, to the benefit of Fale. And right now, nothing's to the benefit of Kojima because Tomatonga and Takahashi are really isolating him here. Now, Tomatonga got a charge, but he misses the splash. And then Kojima there with, I think, the forearm. And now, oh, could it be the lightning chops here to Tomatonga? Oh, just lighten up that chest, partner. This is brutal. And, oh, God, there's another chop there. Can Kojima get his offense in? What do you think, partner? Is he going to do it tonight or not? Broke it up, man. Somehow, someone on the Bullet Club is going to come in. Maybe not. No, Folly's up there. I don't know. And Folly with the clubby blows there. Loves Kojima, yeah. Man. 
Kojima would actually be able to get that elbow drop. Totally saw that coming. <laughs> One of these days, I'm sure he will. And right now, though, Kojima just getting rod by Bad Luck Volley. Now Bad Luck Volley going to take him back into the ring, and Tama Tonga going to try and pick the bones there. And there's a body shot there to Kojima, and there's a clubby blow to Kojima there by Fale. And now just, oh, eating turnbuckle there. And now Takahashi's going to come in. And now you see the bullet you club. Tama Tonga using that turnbuckle to mush Kojima's face against it. Well, I was even getting ready to say, partner, I mean, this is where the Bullet Club is at their best. You can see they're isolating Kojima, they're making frequent tags, they're working very well together, and this is a bad place for Kojima to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kojima is in a really bad spot right now. He needs to get a tag in, and if he does, hopefully it is to Nakanishi, because I feel like Juice Robinson might be the most likely person on that team to get beaten Kahashi. I would have to agree with that assessment, partner, and you saw that Kojima just contracted ring postitis thanks to Tamatanga and Fale, but it was still only able to get a two count for Yujiro. And now just sends Kojima into the opposite corner, and there's a boot there. I tell you, Takahashi's boots are no joke. And now could it be the Fisherman Buster? I'm surprised he got it off this early, but Kojima's really been rocked. Hooks the leg. Two. And oh, that was close, but Kojima stays in it. Good old Kojima, keeping himself and his team alive. Absolutely. And you know Jay Lethal had to take note of that. It's going to take a lot to put Kojima away. Kojima catching the boot. Is it going to be the Koji Cutter? It is going to be the Koji Cutter, and now Kojima needs to make a tag. I'm thinking he'll tag in Nakanishi. Nakanishi in there. And he does. And Nakanishi now just straight power. There's a shot there to Takashi. Another shot to Takashi. Sends him back into the ropes. And now really laying in those forearms. Nakanishi is a real difference maker. Look at that. Takashi can't even initiate the Irish whip because Nakanishi's so big. Gets the lariat. Takes Fale and Tamatango off the apron. Oh, now Nakanishi. Oh, now he's going for the big lariat. Is he going to get it here? Nakanishi off the ropes, and he got it. Oh, but he gets it. Is he going to get the pin, though? One, two. Oh, and Takahashi kicks out. That was close, but not enough. And now, going to be the torture oh. rack here. Yeah, he's got, got him up. Oh, but look at Fale. This is is he going to get Fale up? Oh, I thought he was going to try and put Fale in the torture rack. This is a singles match that I'd like to see. Fale and Nakanishi go at it. Certainly, look at this by Nakanishi. Gets Fale up for the torture rack. Wow. That's impressive. That is straight power, people. That is scary. And now, went for the layer again. Takashi kicked to the midsection. Is it going to be a neck breaker? It is going to be a neck breaker. Yeah, neck breaker on Nakanishi there. And now, maybe Nakanishi wants to get a tag, but I feel like Juice Robinson might not be the best option. I think he's going to have to, though. Yeah, Juice Robinson and Tama Tonga. This is not the kind of matchup you want if you're Kojima or Nakanishi. What a hurricane runner there by Tama Tonga. Just a quick snap on it. And now off the ropes, but Juice Robinson misses the lariat. Catches him. What a double-A spine buster there by Juice Robinson to Tama Tonga. Patient that he got on it, even if it wasn't a complete 180 degrees, it was still really well done. Absolutely. And that corner lariat there, could it be time for a cannonball? There's no Look swimming. It is, John. Yeah, there was no swimming pool in sight, so Tama Tonga would have to suffice. And he gets all of it. And now Juice Robinson on the top rope here. Could it be a cross body? He definitely goes for these cross bodies as soon as he can. And there he hits it. Oh, wow. High impact. One, two. And then look at that. Tama Tonga might not have even kicked out of that, John. I don't know. It looked like he needed Yujiro and Bad Luck Fale to save him from that. I have to agree. Now, could it be a power bomb here by Juice Robinson? No, it's not. And now the head shrinker, the head shrinker. And that could do it there. Is that going to be enough? It probably will be, actually. Tama Tonga, though, not initiating the pin right away. This is quite peculiar. He's uh, trying to set up for the gun stun. He is. Look at that. I've been saying that it should be a setup, and he's actually doing it. And there's the gun stun. Lateral press, count to 100. It's over. 
That was smart by Tomatonga. And again, in my mind, I know you've made the counterpoint that it softens up and everything, but that should be the sequence. And it was a winning sequence for Tomatonga tonight. Yep. Maybe he needs to use that going forward. And Kojima, he just collapses. Ko Kojima was put through the ringer in this match. And even though he didn't eat the pin, his team does lose tonight to the Bullet Club. And we'll see if Kenny Omega can build upon the example that his three cohorts have set. Can he beat Nakajima tonight? That's still to come. But what a tag team match this was. And Tomatonga continues to impress, partner. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to point out. Tomatonga, again, man, he's on quite a roll. I, I have to really think that maybe he can get the job done against Fale. I, you know... You have to imagine if he could just find a way to get Fale down on his knees or get him in some kind of position where he can hit the gun stun. I mean, hell, maybe he can even counter the grenade into a gun stun. We don't know the true depth of Tomatonga's abilities when it comes to executing the gun stun. We may be able to find that out come Friday. So, Not Saturday. Thank you for that correction, John. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem, partner. And, uh, you know, Tomatonga taking one final bow, and he certainly earned it. He has just been so impressive. And I'm telling you, partner, Tomatonga, to me, is just the kind of athlete. He puts the pieces together. When he forms a cohesive whole, when he forms a picture of who he wants to be, I pity anybody that thinks that they're going to be able to stop him. I really do. I think he could still be a real tour de force in this business. Tell me this next match isn't completely lopsided you've got Hiroshi Tenzan the man with the worst record in the A block teaming up with Captain New Japan easily the man with the worst record in these tag matches a moderately successful although not as successful as their three-man counterpart but still a moderately successful Los Ingobernables de Japón team exactly I mean, you want to talk about tipping the scales. I think the one side broke with how much weight was on it, tipping the other side. Uh, yeah. I don't – yeah, this isn't going to go well for Tenzon and Captain New Japan. As you might have guessed, John, Sonata will, in fact, be facing Tenzon on Friday. That's the only match that these guys haven't had in this block so far. I have to give Sonata the win in that case, partner. But then again, Tenzon, look, his, his G1 Climax experience has been pretty awful. I'm not going to try and deny that. But he is a veteran. You know, he's innovated quite a few maneuvers. That experience, he may be able to draw upon that well of experience to get a victory over Sonata come Friday. Definitely. And now there is Sonata, another man much like Tomatonga, though. If I'm being frank... I do think Tomatonga has just slightly more potential than Sonata for my money, but I still think Sonata is another one where if you just put all the pieces together, he could really be something in New Japan Pro Wrestling or anywhere in the world for that matter. I mean, this is a business where you got to build your value, and who knows where Sonata will go to stake his claim. But here tonight, I his will focus say though, John, I will. Sorry about that. I will say though. And I do think Sonata has more of a ceiling, higher of a ceiling, because you've also got to take into account that they naturally will push own Japanese stars more than than uh, foreigners, more than Gaijin like Tamatonga. They're naturally going to get more of a favoritism from the higher ups in New Japan than Gaijin. And that's certainly an excellent point you make, partner. So you know who knows where either man will end up when we have the same conversation either next year or five years from now. But in the present, it is tag team action. And you got to imagine that Tenzon and especially Captain New Japan, they are going to have to be at their best. Los Ingobernables de Japón, even this tag team that, as you said, to use your own words, has been moderately successful. It's no joke. It's no laughing matter. They've got to be on their A game. And we'll see if they can do it here tonight. I think that the biggest reason that they don't have more success, their matches are against a tag team consisting of two G1 competitors. This, on the other hand, not only does this only consist of one G1 competitor, which immediately favors them, but the G1 competitor that's in this has the worst record in the entire tournament at two and six. Yeah, and the cherry on top of the obstacle Sunday, if you will, 
is that Captain New Japan is the tag team partner. And not to take the piss out of Captain New Japan for the millionth time in the course of this tournament, but I mean, come on, guys. Dude, You've seen the match. <laughs> exactly. You've all seen it. You know what it is. And it's just been a rough time. And Captain New Japan, he's barely a bullet club hunter. I think he's the worst hunter I've ever seen. Certainly no King Cuerno is Captain New Japan. How the hell does he expect to hunt Los Ingobernables de Japón? Well, I, I guess we're going to find out here because he's going to end up getting into this match eventually, you've got to think. I know Tenzan, but I think he's also a relatively nice guy, so he's probably going to end up needing to tag Captain New Japan in eventually. We are starting things off with a G1 preview for Friday, though. Sonata and Tenzan, and just, just how these guys match up. I mean, Sonata, despite the fact that he also is mathematically eliminated, got an impressive victory in his last tournament match bout because he made Ishii, the stone pipple, made him tap out to the skull end. And I'll tell you. Yeah, Sonata has a really impressive resume. He might only have three wins, but those three wins are against T T Tanahashi, which was amazing, and he made him tap out. Goto, who he made pass out, and Ishii, who he also made tap out. Nice shoulder block there by Tenzan, but I agree with you, partner. I mean, the names, the quality of performers that Sonata has beaten uh, yeah. far outweighs his uh, record quantitatively speaking. And there's the first Mongolian chop there by Tenzan. Another Mongolian chop. This is signature Tenzan here. And yeah, Sonata I mean, just goes down. It's, it's, it's one of those things where he doesn't have the best record, but the quality of the record he does have is exceptional. Exactly, and... Now look at There's these a two. Mongolian from Captain New Japan. Oh, alternating ops here from Captain New Japan and Tenzan. I actually feel bad for Sonata. That's got to be painful. Absolutely. And now Captain New Japan there with just a straight right shot. And we'll see what Captain New Japan can do here. I think he's going to try for a shoulder. No, he's not going to try anything because Bushi grabbed the leg. That's so smart by Los Ingobernables de Japón. This is a brilliant sequence. You're right, John. Bushi grabs the leg. Sonata sees it coming and hits the drop kick. And then just to make sure that they have a little extra room to clear things out, there's the windmill from Bushi. Sonata goes over and punches Tenzan off the apron. And here's the shirt choke. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He had that held in for almost eight seconds. Yeah, and Cab the New Japan already in a bad way. And I can't even really necessarily fault him. Uh, you know, he was caught by Bushi initially, and he just really hasn't gotten out of the block ever since. And now, off the ropes, here goes Captain New Japan, and he actually got the shoulder block. Nice. Good job, Captain New Japan. You did something right and, for once. And he was smart enough to tag in Tenzan. Here we go, Tenzan and Sonata. Again, a preview for Friday here. Back to the Mongolian chops. Sonata in the corner here. I'm just going to stop. Headbutt there. And now he's going to shoot Sonata into the opposite corner. Charges. Corner lariat there. And now could it... going to get a vertical suplex. And yes, we are. Sonata getting rocked there. Lateral press. Two. Sonata kicks out. Sonata, I'll tell you. A lot tougher is... than that. He, he's withstood quite a bit from... And Goto and Tanahashi in order to beat them. I think he can withstand a vertical suplex after a little bit of a series. From... And now, Mountain Bomb there by oh, Tenzan. And there's the Mountain Bomb. Lateral press here. Two. Sonata kicks out again. Oh, could it be the Anaconda Vice here, partner? Already? Wow. And if Sonata taps, this match is over. Look at this, though. Bushi realizes it, just stomping on Tenzan. I just love how this team always has each other's backs, and that's what makes them so difficult to stop. And now Captain New Japan actually wants to tag. I don't know if that's smart, but Captain New Japan comes in. See, I, I've always had... The... And now Captain New Japan, nice back elbow. They're going to send Sonata into Tenzan, Mongolian shop. And Sonata's positioning is perfect for the headbutt. Actually, gonna be able to hit well. No, of course not. He's taking too long. 
Yeah, he's doing all this grandstanding. Come on, Captain New Japan. You're in there with Wilson. Go See, this is what I'm talking about. You're not taking the threat seriously. And that's what happens. He misses the headbutt. And now Bushi's going to come in. Did you he notice, though, Captain New Japan is basically the new Honma? Yeah. He's a perennial loser who always misses a headbutt off the top. But, I mean, to give... Oh, wait a minute. Victor roll counter to... And Sonata kicks out. But to at least give Hanma credit, I still feel like he has a greater sense of urgency when it comes to a top rope Kakeshi than Kavitha Nuchman does with his head. But as Sonata kicks out oh. of the Uranagi tab. Right now, absolutely he does. But I'm talking about a year, year and a half ago when Hanma was still losing everything. Right. I get what you're saying. Oh, Kavitha Nuchman, I think was thinking about that throat thrust. He got it there. Uppercut off the ropes. Sonata catches him. Could it be a TKO? TKO there. I'll tell you what, that could do it. And then it goes for the pin. And Kyle Ninja Man actually kicking out. I'll be damned. Oh, well, yeah, hey, man, the that. TKO hasn't put anyone away yet. But now, Sonata looks like he's getting the ready to completely lock in the... Yeah, that's going to be it. The end of the yeah, it's end. over. It's over. He's dead in the middle of the ring, and that's it. Ref calls for the bell. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we, we kind of saw that coming. That was... Uh... That was an inevitability. Captain New Japan in the ring with Sonata. That long with him. Exactly. And I'll tell you. However, John, we we do have a pretty huge match coming up next. Are you ready for the list of contestants? Certainly. Let's get to it. Okay. Tanahashi, Makabe, Kushida, and then the former junior tag team champions, Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask. On Marafuji, yet again with chaos. Again, that kind of leads me to believe Marafuji and possibly even also Nakajima might be getting inducted into chaos sooner rather than later. But chaos consisting of representatives Okada, Ishii, Goto, and Ghetto. Ah, very nice. And I'll tell you, Sonata sending a bit of a message, taking that bat to Tenzon, just reminding him, you think that's bad? Wait till Friday. And Tenzon better have that skull end scouted by then because it could be a bad time. Absolutely, yeah. He he's definitely needs to, to step it up. And he's got two wins so far, and he's obviously going to be open to add a third. I think he's got it in him, though especially because they're going to be in the sumo hall. I think Tenzan is going to feed off of that energy in that building to be able to pull out an upset. And I think I would consider an upset for him to beat Sonata, and I think he's going to be able to pull it off. We'll see. Yes, we will see, partner. But in the meantime, as you said, a huge tag team main event to close out the first half of day 16. A 10-man tag. I love these things. They're so exciting. Tiger Mask, Liger, Kushida, Makabe, and Tanahashi versus Ghetto, Marafuji, Goto, Okada, and Ishii. Who do you even have in that match, partner? You know, it's a really difficult thing to pick because one team has the former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Champs on it, former multiple time, I believe, actually. You've got three G1 competitors compared to two. I have to call, but I think. My initial instinct is to pick the team represented by Tanahashi with him and Makabe and the you know the junior tag champs uh or former her and Tiger Mask and Kushida. But I think I'm gonna go a little bit out on a limb and say Ghetto is actually gonna pick up a tag team win today. He's not gonna actually beat anybody, but he's gonna be on the winning team. Ah, okay. Very interesting. I know it's surprising, it's surprising, and I'm probably gonna be wrong but i'm going out on a limb and i'm picking it hey i can certainly understand that partner i mean you're talking to the guy that wrote the book on going with your gut feeling and having nothing to show for it but i'll tell you somebody that does have a lot to show for his g1 climax tournament experience mara fuji who is now uh coming into the ring here he has been so impressive in the a block yeah definitely mara fuji is currently Eve. Five and three. He's actually tied with Okada, Tanahashi, Goto, and Fale for the best record in the A block. And important match coming up on 
where he's going to be taking on Goto. That that might even main event the show. That's a huge match. Are in the five win three loss column. The winner could very well end up main eventing Wrestle Kingdom eleven, depending on how Okada Tanahashi goes down. I mean, anything can happen in both of these blocks. And I'll tell you what, even if it goes south for Marafuji, even if he has no Wrestle Kingdom 11 main event to show for it, he still has an overall winning record. And for his first G1 Climax, I think that's something to be proud of, partner. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we already said that there's a very strong possibility that Tamatonga can beat Bad Luck Fale on Friday and Tanahashi go to a tie then the winner of Marafuji Goto will actually win wrestle will actually win the block not not necessarily the tournament but they will win the block right and you see there the chaos towel being uh, displayed proudly by ghetto and this team looking fierce and ishi despite losing to sonata i still got to give him big props i mean he beat okada in a very competitive match and speaking of okada he's going to be doing his rainmaker pose on the top rope here uh, just it's a very interesting case loses to Ishii and then loses to follow uh, Fale. He has two straight tournament match losses. And I just wonder if Okada's going to be able to bounce back from that. And yet still as arrogant as ever. And you know what though? That could be a good sign because if you're confident in yourself, even after that kind of setback, I mean, look at Tanahashi who Okada is going to be facing on Friday. Uh, he started this tournament. Oh, and three. Now, if that doesn't give you a complex, I don't know what does. And yet he's been able to roar back five straight tournament victories. It's just unbelievable. And as you speak of him, he appears. There's Tanahashi's theme song, and he's about to come out. And, and it's worth – let's just talk about the obstacles that Okada and Tanahashi have to overcome in order to win the tournament right now. First things first, each other. Yes. A match is going to have a very – very high chance of winning their block. If Tanahashi wins, what he needs is for Bad Luck Fale to lose, and he wins the block. Because Bad Luck Fale... Actually, no, he, he beat the Bad Luck Fale, didn't he? That's correct, he did. That was the backslide controversy, if you remember. That's right, that's right. Well, so then, you know what? Let's just put it this way. If Tanahashi wins, he's in. Because he beat Marafuji, he beat Fale... He beat Goto, and then he would have beaten Okada as well after he, after if he wins that match. So, win and you're in scenario. Okada, in the meantime, needs quite a bit more help. He needs Fale to lose because he did lose to him. He needs for Goto to defeat Marafuji because Okada beat Goto, but he lost to Marafuji. So, he needs Fale and Marafuji both to lose their respective matches on Friday, and of course, he also needs to get the job done and defeat Tanahashi. Now, partner, would you agree with me in saying that that's a big ask from Okada? I mean, that's it seems is. Like a lot. It definitely is, and it's not impossible, but the odds aren't great. The odds are not in his favor, as they would say on the Hunger Games. Exactly. And uh, now we got these two teams here. Both teams are stacked in their own respective ways. And I'll tell you, I'm very curious who's going to come out on the winning end here. Also take into account that there's a possibility that Tanahashi and Okada, having been so evenly matched, I mean, let's let's look at their Wrestle Kingdom main events. I guarantee you at least a couple of those have gone over 30 minutes. Exactly. And I'll tell you, if they go to a draw, I mean, doesn't that benefit? Who does that benefit? Because I was going to say Marafuji, but I might be wrong. Goto more than anyone. Believe it or not, right? One of those men win. They've both beaten Goto. So you know, if either one of them actually beats the other, Goto is is mathematically eliminated. But if they go to a draw, Fale loses and Goto defeats Marafuji. Goto wins the A, a B, or uh, yeah, the A block. That is just insane to think about, partner. Yeah, Man. and and I'm I'm looking right now. And Tanahashi and Okada, Wrestle Kingdom 10 in the Tokyo Dome timestamp. I think I have it pulled up here. Uh, yes, 36 minutes and one second. So they went over 30 minutes then. There's no reason they won't go over 30 minutes on Friday. 
maybe the sense of urgency will make it shorter, but if they go 30 minutes on Friday, they're going to go to a double draw, a time limit draw at that. Now look at these two. You want to talk about a sense of urgency. Okada wanted the Rainmaker early, and we're back at neutral here. But oh, this is yes, what you can expect did. on Friday. This is yeah, exactly, this is exactly what, you what you can expect on Friday. Friday. This sense of urgency, this sort of let's push ourselves to the limit and – they need to because if they don't have a sense of urgency, they might end up going over time limit and both lose out in that case because then they'd actually be hoping for a Goto Marafuji draw and a, uh, I believe, and a bad luck folly loss. And even then, I think it would be Tanahashi that would win the block, not Okada. So Okada needs to beat Tanahashi in order to win the block. A draw will not do for him. If he draws Tanahashi... He is mathematically eliminated from winning the A block. And I'll tell you, partner, what's so crazy about both these blocks being up for grabs and the circumstances that would make which guy win, those circumstances are beyond extraordinary. And yet they could happen. I mean, and look at Kushida here and Marafuji. That exchange, inverted atomic drop there to Marafuji. Drop kick to the knee. Now we can expect the cartwheel drop kick here. And he got it. But, I mean, the circumstances yep. are so extraordinary to make any of that happen. I mean... I, I really can't even say who I think is going to win the block. And I still have people, as far as the uh, the B block is concerned today, that I think could make a comeback. You know, Kenny Omega, for instance. But who's standing in his way? The genius of the kick, Nakajima. Not easy. Nice drop kick there by Marafuji. And now Ishii's going to clear oh, the apron. Oh, there you see Ishii and Ghetto going over and clearing out the opposite apron. And I don't know if you noticed, but the way that Ghetto cleared the apron was by poking his opponents in the eyes. Of course, Ghetto. <laughs> And now the first night bench oh. chopping partner. You have... And that is going to do so much more damage to a smaller guy like Kushida because he has so much less padding on his chest. Exactly. Kushida may very well, if this continues, get opened up. But I think Marafuji is going to tag in. Goto, he does. Yeah, and, and Goto is dangerous, but at least he's not going to bust you open with chops. And I'll tell you, partner, I am used to Kushida being vicious. I am used to him being uh, visceral, but I'm not used to him being this vulnerable right now. He's really being isolated. But you've also got to take into account he's going to be in the ring. There is a 60% a chance at any given time in this tag team match that he will be in the ring with a G1 competitor. And that's not something he's necessarily used to. Exactly, and again, we have to look at the weight disparity as now. Just as I talk about that, a 60% chance, and, and in comes Ghetto. <laughs> exactly, and I was even getting ready to mention the weight disparity, you know, Kushida being in there with heavyweights, and oh, then Ghetto actually, comes now in. Now I'm thinking about it, it's not a 60% chance, it's an 80% chance. Every other member of this team that isn't Ghetto is a G1 competitor. I didn't realize how stacked this team was until I really got a good look at it. Absolutely, and then and look at that. Kushida just eating the boots of Okada. Now, oh, God. You want to talk about weight disparities and everything else? Ishii just came in. First, he clears the apron with the help of Ghetto. This yeah. is not good for Kushida. No, it is not. And now everyone is in, and Kushida is about to get quintuple teamed. First, the Irish whip, then the chop from Ishii, then the chop from Goto, then the chop from Okada. Oh, and oh, and there's Ghetto, but Marafuji is going to finish it off. Oh, that chop. And you actually saw Kushida spit mouth when Marafuji chopped him. A headbutt from Ishii, and, and uh, Kushida is done. Yeah, Kushida, he's a former time splitter. If he ever wanted to go back in time and change the course of history, it would be right now. And he tries a forearm by Taishi, but are you kidding me? I think Kushida might have hurt his own forearm on that. And just one headbutt from Ishii just staggers Kushida. Oh, Again, though, God. it is it's a huge disparity in power here. Absolutely, and another forearm by Ishii. Good God, it couldn't be the Lariat. Kushida ducks, Pele kick, and that's the only thing saving Kushida is that quickness. He needs, needs to make a tag here. And it probably should be Makabe that he goes to tag. And look at how smart Chaos is, though, partner. That is so freaking smart. And now, oh, handspring back elbow, <laughs> maybe? He got it. It's funny, Makabe. Makabe looks like Okada from like a dystopian future. Yeah. <laughs> and you just look Maka at them next to each other, and it's like Makabe is Okada's future if the world just goes to shit. Exactly. And 
And speaking of the future, this is a preview for Friday as well. Ishii versus Makabe. Yes. We've seen countless great matches from these guys. I'm not expecting anything less on Friday. They're going to kill each other. If you're a fan of pissing contests, guys, imagine two strong style competitors going at it. And now, yeah, well, yeah, you say pissing contests, I say dick waving contests. It's the same thing. And at the end of the day, these guys are but just just so driven by that testosterone and that that primal urge to not be made sort of lesser by anyone and not be embarrassed. And they're just gonna go out there and they're gonna puff their chests out and they're gonna try and of each other, and it's going to be so entertaining. I think these two men, and I could... Hey. Yeah, Makabe there just scored a nice lariat, only got a two count, and I'm not trying to play armchair psychologist, but when I look at these two guys when they face each other, I almost feel like the other guy feels like if I fall to this guy's lariat, or if I lose to his power, then that's almost a sense of emasculation, if you will, for one of these men, and that's Gee, something they want to look, across. look at this power. Wow, just the the slow deadlift back body drop there to Makabe, and Makabe gets the foot up, follows through off the ropes. Ishii with the power slam, though. Makabe eats it, and oh, eats a lariat from Ishii. Good God, he rocked him there. Oh, yeah, he did. Ishii is a monster, and he tags in. Stop tagging in Ghetto. You've got three other options on the apron that are so much better. I think Ishii deliberately trying to lose this match here, in my estimation. It definitely seems like it. Makabe versus Ghetto is such a mismatch. Yeah, it is. I mean, think about it. It's the same mismatch that Kushida had earlier. Oh, what a straight shot by Makabe. And another one in Ghetto. And now he falls off his feet. Yeah, I was surprised he was even standing up to those first two shots. The third one does it. And now Tiger and Mask. now Makabe needs to get to his corner, and there's Tiger Mask. Crossbody right out of the gate. Beautifully done by Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask is a really underrated competitor. What a straight kick there to get him. Took him off his feet. I know it could be the Tiger Bomb here. Could be a Tiger Bomb already? Two. Oh, and Ghetto actually kicking out. I'm amazed that count didn't have to get broken up. Yeah, that was awesome. I love the Tiger Bomb. That's one of my favorite moves. I'll tell you what, though, if... Uh... Tiger Mask gets that armbar that he's been using as of late. This match could be over. And look at Marafuji paying dividends Mara Fuji there. Marafuji helping his brothers out. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Marafuji is an inevitable member of chaos. It's just a matter of how long it takes for them to induct him. Do you think he's more of a definitive uh, recruitment than Nakajima? I do, do, yeah. I think that Nakajima is, is probably going to end up in the stable as well, but Marafuji just seems like such a natural fit. And now look at this matchup, partner, Jushin Thunder Liger and Goto. Absolutely. This is going to be insane. Oh, and Goto follows through with the lariat. And Kushida, though, breaks it up. And Kushida, now he's <laughs> taking people off the apron. That's got to feel good. Yeah, yeah, really getting some revenge on those heavyweights from earlier on in the match, and they all teamed up on him. Now we're going to get, it looks like a, maybe a quadruple team. I don't know where... Uh, Look at this sequence there. Oh, there's Kushida. He was hiding. And there's Makabe with the Lariat. And in comes Tanahashi with the crossbody. Nice. And then Liger there with that palm Sorry strike. From Liger. And yeah, the pen gets broken up. It looked and like. Oka Okada. Oh, tried for the boots. Tanahashi caught it. And there's the dragon screw again. A preview for Friday. Oh, man. That is not good for Okada. No, it is not, but look at this matchup here. Goes for, I think he just hit another palm strike. Goto powering up, though. I don't think this is a great matchup for Liger. Ushi Goroshi, and now look at Goto. Not even going to bother with the cover because the GTR. Hooks the leg here. Yeah. Two, it's Two, over. Three, yep. A to that team, and then... Hey, it, it really did come down not to necessarily the weak link, but the strength in numbers. It was four G1 competitors teaming up against two. That much of an advantage. It's tough for your team to do anything but win. Exactly. A David Finley Goto isn't. And he pins Jushin Thunder Liger here. And that's got to be huge for Goto before his matchup on Friday. And Chaos standing tall here. 
as you may have guessed, Goto and Marafuji are on the same team now, but they are facing each other on Friday. And as we've been talking about, Okada and Tanahashi and Ishii and Makabe will also be going at it already up in each other's faces. Uh, that's the that's one of my favorite rivalries in New Japan. Those guys always put on such good matches, and they just seem to. It's not even necessarily like a Shibata Naito hate. It's just that they are just so competitive. Like they are the ultimate rivals. Exactly, and we're definitely going to see that rivalry renewed come Friday, as well as Tanahashi Okada. Friday is going to really be the night of rivalries. It seems like when it comes to two really. Uh, big matches there, you know, Makabe and Ishii and Tanahashi Okada, especially. And this team gets the win. Kushida I vibe and the fans. And that was our tag team main event, if I'm not mistaken, partners. And now we can shift our focus to tournament bouts. Sir, yes, we can. And I believe, interestingly enough, the first tournament bout, in my opinion at least, is probably going to be the most interesting one of the day. We've got Katsuhiko Nakajima taking on Kenny Omega. I'm not entirely sure why this is going on first, but at four and three so far, fighting it out to see who can get that fifth win and kind of join the rest of the A block, who the best record is five and three. Right. And hopefully Kenny Omega can be among them. Uh, Nakajima, though, is a fierce competitor, and he will be standing in Omega's way. And we will be uh, giving all the coverage of the tournament matches, but this concludes the first half of G1 Climax 26, Day 16. Omega, when he is really focused, I don't know if he can be beat, but he's got a challenge today in Nakajima, who I could probably say the same thing about. When he's focused, I don't know if he can be beat. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to close this thing out right about now. First match between Omega and Nakajima is as good as I've been kind of building it up to be. But we'll see up next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 